Good evening, you're watching Left, Right and Center. I'm Nidhi Razdan. Tonight, Gujarat remains tense after the Patel reservation protests turned violent. Seven people are killed. Was the situation mishandled by the state or is the reservation demand by the Patel community completely unreasonable? Also tonight, the sensational Sheena Bora murder case. How can a fair probe be ensured in the age of social media and media trials? That debate coming up in about 30 minutes from now. But first, seven people were killed, four in police firing as parts of Gujarat remain tense today over the Patel Reservation Rao. The violence was sparked off by the detention of Hardik Patel, the 21-year-old leader of the protests, who's demanding reservations for the community and government jobs and educational institutions. Prime Minister Modi stepped in this morning and appealed for peace in a statement, saying that solutions can be found through discussions. The situation in Ahmedabad is currently under control, though there's still curfew in nine police station areas. Schools will remain closed tomorrow as well, both in Ahmedabad as well as Surat. The army has also been called in. Gujarat simmering in the Kota call room. SRPF forces running behind our protesters. Another, they're going to fire. Another tear gas shell has just been fired here in uh, Surat, trying to disperse those crowds. There's an explosion which took place. Tear gas shells, stone pelting, lati charge. Awesome. Buses and police vehicles, public property worth several crore destroyed as protesters clashed with the police across the state. Gujarat is on the boil after Hardik Patel, the 21-year-old leader of the Patel community, was detained and his supporters lati charged. This after the massive rally demanding reservation for government jobs and educational institutes for the Patel community. Well, several parts of Ahmedabad continue to be under uh, curfew. In fact, we're in Gatlode area and you can hear behind me uh, police officials, uh, police personnel moving through uh, the affected parts, informing, making announcements that curfew has been imposed. The PM appealed for peace going unheard. Gujarat na sao bhaiyo bheno ne shanti rakhwa maate agrah karu chho hinsa na marge jai ne kyaare ka shu vartu na thi अपने बदा साथ मिली ने बातचीत द्वारा समस्याओं उकेल लाइए द वर्स्ट इफेक्टेड अहमदाबाद सूरत मेहसाना एंड सौराष्ट्र विद कर्फ्यू बींग इम्पोज इन फ्यू एरियाज शॉकिंगली द पुलिस इनिशियली नॉट इवन ऑन द स्ट्रीट्स गिविंग रैम्पेजिंग प्रोटेस्टर्स अ फ्री रॉन एट टू लास्ट नाइट वी हेड इम्पोज कर्फ्यू इन दीज नाइन पुलिस स्टेशन एरियाज and uh, subsequent to that uh, incidents have come down in the night the patel community however blaming the police for talking the violence this cctv footage accessed from the community which allegedly shows how last night the police damaged public property ye mamla itna hath se isliye aage chala gaya kyunki hardik patel ko 10 minute ke liye usne arrest kar liya with the violence not ending and a total breakdown of trust between the Patel community and the government forcing the center to rush in the army and paramilitary forces. Our prayer was that brother Gujarat made peace in Gujarat. All the Andolan workers went home. Then the police killed the children in the house and broke their cars and broke their windows and broke their windows. But the protesters also deliberately targeting even the media. We were traveling on this flyover. Uh, in Surat, when suddenly these protesters began uh, pelting stones at us, it has completely shattered our windscreen. And you can see that stone there. It's a huge one, which could have hit anybody of us. The presence of paramilitary forces will help, but as the evening descends, under the cover of darkness, the worry Gujarat could suffer another round of unending violence. Well, certainly it has been a tense day in many parts of the state today. The question is whether the entire issue has been mishandled by the state or whether uh, the Patel community and led by Hardik Patel is being completely unreasonable in its demands. What's the way forward? Joining us on the program tonight, we have Professor Yogendra Yadav, the co-founder of the Swaraj Abhiyan, KC Tyagi, the Secretary General and Spokesperson and Member of Parliament from the JDU. With the JDU is important because Nitish Kumar has actually lent his support uh, to Hardik Patel yesterday. Senior journalist Nija Chaudhary here in the studio with us also joining us senior journalist Shahid Siddiqui 
from the BJP. We have Ajaz Elmi joining us and Shaina NC from Mumbai. Uh, let me take this first uh, to you, Yogendra Yadav. You know, your thoughts on how this entire issue has been handled since yesterday. There are two parts to it. One is the detention of Hardik Patel and the violence that followed and one is the issue itself. Uh, do you believe that the government in a sense there in Gujarat has tied itself up in knots over this? Uh, one is a limited mishandling of the agitation. The second is a fundamental inability of the political system in this country to address the quota question with any reasonable uh, system or order. Uh, first thing first, uh, it's clearly the case that yesterday's agitation was mishandled. From whatever reports we have here in the media, whatever we know, the provocation did not come from the protesters. There was no violence. They were not armed. And clearly the first provocation came from the police. And under the simple pretext of their deadline of 5 o'clock being over, I mean, this is so silly. Clearly there is a mix of arrogance and ignorance. The police doesn't know how to handle, or the political establishment doesn't know how to handle a situation like this. And they, can think, they think they can get away with whatever they do. Now this doesn't surprise me because in Gujarat, as we read yesterday, the governor believes that any protest uh, is not acceptable. You cannot actually protest in a private hall. So there is that climate of intolerance which is what has created the situation yesterday for which the state government is squarely to be blamed. Even if the protesters are not themselves blameless, especially in the violence that took place after that. The second and the deeper question is how do you handle this question of a community wanting reservations and inclusion in the quota? We have this in state after state and the political system has no response to that and therefore the only message the political system has given is come out on the street, come out in bigger number, twist my arms, I might yield. This is the message that goes out and this is what everyone tries. This is what Gujars tried in Rajasthan. They succeeded after several attempts. This is what the Jats are trying in Haryana and many other places. This is what Marathas are trying in Maharashtra and this is what Patidas are trying. And the strange thing now is that it is not the most disadvantaged communities which want inclusion. Exactly. It is actually the better off community within the OBCs which want inclusion. And the system has no way of responding to it. I think Clearly, those are very important points. The one thing points. that we know is that Do this question cannot be settled on the street. There has to be a system. There has to be something like an Equal Opportunity Commission. There has to be an NCBC which has to come into the picture. But that's a larger thing which is not restricted only to Gujarat. Yes, and I, and I, and I do want to explore what you said uh, in a little more depth in just a few minutes. I, but I want to ask Ajaz Ilmi this question that Yogendra Yadav raised. Firstly, on the, on the, the handling of the situation, uh, do you think in, 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 in retrospect uh, it, it was silly to have taken uh, Hardik Patel into detention at all? In a sense, he became a hero out of this agitation. You know, he is getting a lot of criticism for, for uh, you know, agitating on the streets. And as Yogendra Yadav said, street protests aren't the solution to this. No, definitely street protest violence and, and, a, and a mob culture is not the solution, especially when the government is trying to reach out. Even as this agitation was, was building up for the last one month in various cities, the government reached out to Hardik Patel and his team and the PASS and he said that come and have a dialogue. In fact, a seven-member committee was formed. We tried to reach out to, to the Patidars and, and tell them that, yes, we understand that despite your dominant position economically, financially, they are a section of Patels who are lagging behind and who need the uh, economic support or education support. Uh, a via media was provided for Nitin, Dr. Nitin Patel actually came out with the solution that everybody who's beyond the reservation, 52% non-reservation category, who have difficulty in, in securing uh, 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 educational tools or hostel fees or education fees, if they're not able to do it, the government will come up with a solution with a scheme which can uh, uh, cater to everybody who's out of the uh, reserve category. But these are subjects of debate and you can only do it. But I think uh, just giving a clean shit to Mr. Hardik Patel is, is not good enough. There were abrasive statements. There were situations where his body language is very, very clear. And a, and a state of confrontation is something which cannot provide for solutions. It has to be done, done in a calm, peaceful manner. And I hope peace prevails. It's very unfortunate that certain people have lost their lives. Do you believe that he's also being uh, politically backed by other groups? Well, uh, there are political aspirations. People have individual aspirations. And whether some, uh, people should, who want to provide political backing should not forget that if you open this uh, Pandora's box, there will be a class war in every state. The dominant amongst the OBCs will fight for a pie which is shrinking again and again. You will have chaos 
uh, and so what we have to understand this. Let there be a debate in the nation, but we can't allow uh, violence to proceed uh, and, and replace sustained dialogue, which is possible. All right, and I think that that's a fairly reasonable thing to say. The question then, KC Tyagi ji, I wanted to ask you, ki Nitish Kumar ne kal samarthan diya uh, Hardik Patel ko. Uh, he he has supported Hardik Patel. Lekin Tyagi ji, log ye samajna chahte hain ki jo Patel as a community hai, it is the among the more prosperous communities, particularly in Gujarat. Aaj main ye padhi thi, ye bada interesting statistic hai ki agar ab US motel industry ko dekhein, there are 22,000 motels owned by Indians in the US, valued at 128 billion dollars. 70% of these owned by Gujaratis, three quarters of these are Patels. They're actually very, very well off. It gives you a sense of how well off the Patels as a community are. Kya aapko nahi lagta, Tyagi ji, ki it's a dangerous trend. Uh, agar a, a, a community like the Patels starts demanding quotas as well. Nidhi, jo Gujarat ka andolan hai, usne kai chijo ko khola hai. Ek to industrialization ke jariye एग्रेसिव इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन के जरिए जो देश को बताया जा रहा था कि रोजगार बढ़ रहे हैं और पर्टिकुलरली गुजरात जैसे डेवलपमेंट स्टेट में रोजगार बढ़ रहे हैं तो फिर सरकारी नौकरी में आरक्षण की आवश्यकता पटेल जैसी कम्युनिटी को क्यों पड़ी दूसरा ये कोई पहला मौका नहीं है उन्नीस में इससे भी बड़ा आंदोलन इन्हीं वर्गों ने किया था जब पिछड़ी जातियों का कोटा दस से बढ़ा करके 28 परसेंट माधव सिंह सोलंकी ने किया था तो माधव सिंह सोलंकी क्षत्रिय हरिजन आदिवासी और मुस्लिम की एक कॉन्स्टिटेंसी बना रहे थे जिससे पटेल बाहर थे हाँ, तो और उन्होंने उसके उस खिलाफ प्रदर्शन किया था उस टाइम हाँ उसके खिलाफ किया और उसको माधव सिंह सोलंकी को जाना पड़ा लेकिन इसी इसी अलायंस को लेकर के वो फिर दोबारा आए और जितना भी पटेल समाज है जसका तस बीजेपी के साथ चला गया लेकिन उत्तर प्रदेश में बिहार में झारखंड में मध्य प्रदेश में छत्तीसगढ़ के जो पटेल हैं जो नेकपुरमी और कोरी बोलते हैं उनको मंडल कमीशन के तहत आरक्षण दिया हुआ है वो सुविधाएं ले रहे हैं वो ये अकेली कम्युनिटी है पटेल कम्युनिटी जो है जिसको गुजरात में आरक्षण की सुविधा नहीं है और अब उस समय जब मंडल कमीशन लगा था तो वो मैं उस समय उसका प्रशंसक था और आज भी हूं और मैंने उसमें पार्टिसिपेट भी किया था निर्जा जी हम लोगों के साथ थी उस समय तब भी जाट और आंध्र प्रदेश के कम्मा रेड्डी उड़ीसा के खंडायत और पटेल ऑफ गुजरात और मराठा महाराष्ट्र के ये इस मंडल की अवधि से बाहर रह गए थे फॉर सर्टेन एंड वेरियस रीजन जो आज का मुद्दा नहीं है लेकिन अब इन जातियों में भी समय समय पर आरक्षण की मांग उठ रही है तो जो एग्रेसिव इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन के जरिए चाहे पहली सरकार हो या ये सरकार हो कह रही है कि नए जो 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 जनरेट हो रहे हैं प्राइवेट सेक्टर में हो रहे हैं पब्लिक सेक्टर में हो रहे हैं I understand आप ये क्या कह रहे हैं and I just want to take that to China and see because China what what is happening today is for instance uh, you know you're reading cases about a, Patel, a student from the Patel community who may have got 90 percent but doesn't get admission into a medical college or an engineering college whereas someone from the OBC quota who has 45 percent uh, as Hardik Patel was saying will get in so now they are saying that we are being denied opportunities because you know we we are from this you know prosperous community. What has gone wrong? This this community, China, was the biggest support base for Mr. Modi, for the BJP, for a long time in Gujarat. What's gone wrong? But they continue to be Nidhi. So uh, everyone is entitled to an agitation or to uh, certain kind of demands. But I think we need to understand that the Supreme Court has certain guidelines. Uh, beyond 50% reservation is clearly not permissible by the honorable courts. Whether 49.5 is sufficient or not, all these are debatable issues. But I think that the entire community, our Chief Minister of Gujarat has lent out a hand. She herself has said she's happy to meet with all stakeholders, discuss and come up with viable solutions. This is not like a deadlock. And please understand, we have a Chief Minister who is also a Patel. And as far as Mr. Modi's popularity goes, I don't think that you must... Uh, treat it as some kind of a barter to say that you know if he supports then they will be with us and if there is an issue which does not then he will not 
The issue here is that if we talk about reservation, shouldn't it be based on the economic strata of society? And if so, then what are the other issues that come up in various communities? They need to be heard of, they need to be dealt with. And that is exactly what the Honorable Chief Minister of Gujarat has said today. She has said that she's. But so China, happy you don't think it's a concern that a community that has been such a huge support base for the BJP today is coming out in large numbers on the streets, read by, led by a 21 year old man that most of us had not heard of uh, several months ago. And, and you know, he's, he's getting all this traction, he's getting this support. I'm sure there must be some concern in the BJP about how this has been handled. But isn't this the beauty of a democracy that anyone can raise an issue and if public sentiment is for it, they could be a part of it. If the government has a stand, the star government has the right to express a stand. But please, I think there's no question of undermining Mr. Modi's popularity. It cannot be determined on one agitation. And please understand that the work that our government is doing in the centre and in the state is the reason why we have got such resounding victory in Lok Sabha's assemblies, municipal corporations, Jilla Parishads, Gram Panchayats, etc. So I think that the, in a democracy, everyone's aspirations need to be looked into. Uh, discussions are the way forward, but of course, a certain kind of guideline that would one would want to maintain vis-a-vis -vis law and order is something that our state government is clearly doing.